One of the things she finds out is that Harry Seldon's body was jettisoned out into space in a coffin of his own making, <laughs> Paul. I'm sure that'll <laughs> never come up again. Yeah, no, no, It has no not. significance. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Hey, Internet! It's Paul. It's Matt! The Dork Lords. We are here talking about Foundation, Season 1, Episode 5, Upon Awakening. We open with a flashback to Gail's childhood on Synax. We see that she's an acolyte in the Church of the Seer. Uh, and we'll see that early on she's forced to confront the math versus faith dilemma, but we'll talk more about that. Um, we end back in what we'll call the present, uh, essentially. Uh, Gale's <laughs> pod is docked with a ship called the Raven. And she's found out the ship is heading to Selden's home world of Helicon, uh, where she doesn't want to go because she's been accused of murdering him. Um, the ship won't give her access to change course because Rach was supposed to arrive in the pod instead of her. Uh, and we end where she sees this, what I assume is a digital hologram of Selden at the moment of his death. A little, you know, jury's out on exactly what she's seeing, but probably a hologram, maybe an AI, who knows. Something of Selden at the time of his death. Um, and I suspect we'll hear some words of wisdom from that hologram in the next episode. Um, but Paul, before we launch into yes. further discussion, what did you think, good sir, of episode five? I still liked it, but not as much as the others, uh, or even the first two, actually. Um, so it hasn't really gotten up to that first uh my first enthusiasm for it yet uh, but you know they're laying groundwork so um i there were things that gave me pause where it's sort of like you know more of the things i was talking to you before about which is uh you know the extent to which there's like paranormal stuff happening or you know uh i mean what occurred to me um actually today is that i wonder if they're like trying to do a um, a force thing like you know if you're gonna have you know this this uh, space opera do you need some sort of metaphysical force like the force in Star Wars uh, to counterbalance all the uh, science 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 so you're saying like Salvor perhaps would be a practitioner a a foundation Jedi you're saying yes and uh, yeah, and you know, I think they're setting up Gale in a similar way, perhaps. Um, you know, she had that uh, experience when she. That's true. Uh, she does first have visions. Was, uh, she woke up when she should have been sleeping. I think in the last week there was confirmation that this se uh, series has been picked up for season two, by the way. Oh, yes. Um, so that is a thing. They bet so big that, you know, <laughs> it kind yeah. of. Not right, a right. surprise. <laughs> not a surprise. Um, the episode is divided into two sections. Uh, I feel like we see the conflict on Terminus kind of come to a head, and right. then we get we get caught up on Gale's story. Yes. Um, unfortunately, from my aspect, we didn't get to revisit the the Cleons uh, this episode or the Klingons. <laughs> the Klingons not in this. No, no, um, we didn't. But, yeah, but I Kleon, would be fine with Kleons either one. Not in it. Yeah, you know, especially if they <laughs> talk slow. So, that right. would be so much. They had big, big forehead ridges. That would be good. Yes, exactly. Um, but that's been my favorite part sounds. so far, is seeing uh, the the Trantor uh, stuff and the and the Cleon. So I was a little uh, you know, disappointed, disappointed not to see that, it. Yeah. We have a fairly reasonable sized section of Gale in her youth. I don't know. Yes. 10, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Yeah. Um, where so her she and her family belong to this seer church. And she's an acolyte, so she's kind of you know like she's got an elevated position as a child in this in this church. Yeah, they, you know when they need someone to push you off into the water, boy. They, yes. they look at her. I know, like <laughs> damn. damn, that's a, like woof. Okay, uh, but yeah. So one night, she and some of the other acolytes, they there's an abandoned library. I think I think it was, or maybe it was a school. Anyway. There's yeah. an abandoned, we'll call it library. There's an abandoned library, and they've been noticing that there are lights uh, that are flickering on, and so they decide to go investigate. And uh, Gail finds this as a teacher who's there who's taking books out of the library. 
But I think he also has a past relationship with Gail, it sounded like, right? Like he, Yeah, like, I feel I like getting... he's he was her teacher, but yeah. you know, or at least among teachers that she had. Which also suggests that Gail or, wasn't always you know, like, you know Oh yeah. A true believer. <laughs> there was I would hope, in her. actually, because I didn't want to be like, you know, I thought I'd pick up a book of math and you know what? Yeah. I picked it. It was it, pretty interesting. I mean, a lot of that was sort of like reduced, you know, which was was funny. It's like, you know, um, he dies. I'll pick up the book, and then I'll start reading. And oh, this is good. And then I'll, you know, it's like, whoa, okay. You almost missed the, uh, you know, gonna fly now or whatever, you know, from uh, Rocky, just to have this, you know, epic, you know, training reading montage, montage or something. Yes, that's right. <laughs> She chases a chicken. Yeah. She like, punches some meat in a, in a cooler. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very heretical act, punishable by death, to collect these books. Um, and uh, he gets punished for it. For his execution, part of the, as you mentioned, the joy of being an acolyte is you, yes. get, to, you get to tie him up. Yeah. So she doesn't actually push him in, but yeah. close enough. I mean, she ties him to the books and stones. So in yeah, other words, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's being drowned by the books that he stole, which is like, oh, this yeah, is like yeah, yeah. ironic well, punishment. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if that's a, another part of their faith. It's like, uh, how can right. we punish this person in, in the most apt way? <laughs> also, also, think about this. Oh, are you advocating that the sea levels are rising? Well, then we'll drown you in yes. the sea. <laughs> yes. Like, damn, these guys, they're, they're yes. good. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I don't know if uh, one of the other sins is like gluttony. Here's all the food you were eating. Except, except we do see a lot of folks at the bottom of this yeah, yeah. thing. So they, they feed them first and then throw them yeah. in. I didn't know if it was a sea of books. Like, oh, we only got one thing. That's the only punishment that we really It's our, it's our thing. Of. No books. Now, conveniently, the book that he wanted to give to Gail is waterproof. Oh, uh, yeah. Because that was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> if it's just, all the other books had pages. You're like, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. But this yeah. one's like a wooden block. And it, but anyway, okay. So, um, so Gail goes back at night after having executed this guy. Yes. Uh, to, I guess, free him. I think so she could have just, just, I think she could have just asked for the book. I think, you know, oh, no. <laughs> It's like, I don't want to take it from you. I'd rather take it from your dead corpse. Right. This way, it's not, <laughs> I'm not taking, I'm just, it's just there. It's like a found yeah, item. That's right. Um, so she cuts him loose to let him, I guess, drift. He'll like bob to the surface. I don't know. Like, <laughs> oh God. Um, but in the process, because he was, you know, drowned with his books, she takes the one book that's not waterlogged, I guess, and uh, it becomes the book upon which she uses to solve the Abraxas conjecture. It's the yeah, presumably it's that, you know, the Harry Seldon rest her, uh, or at least he asked her about it and she was like, oh, she read this uh, book of, that was like more poetic or something than other right, uh, right, right. math books. So maybe she's just like, you know, uh, this is all I've got. So uh, I wonder if this could work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because she she ends up joining, you know, yeah, applying for this math competition, which is a big no no, and she has to do it like subtly. I feel like also the mom is in on it, right? I mean, she seems like she understands what's happening. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. not. She doesn't approve, but she's like, yeah, okay, no. she's reading the book. I'm not going to turn not my daughter in. Being as yeah, nearly as because yeah. Interestingly, about the execution, I thought there was an interesting parallel. So, obviously, Gail respected this guy that she ends up helping to execute. Yeah. Um, and Rach obviously respects Selden, who he executed in a way, like murdered. But so in some ways, it's like both of their, I don't say religions, but both of their, uh, you know, the systems that they're in kind of made them kill someone that they mm. respect. Kind mm. of interesting. Anyway. Yeah. This is interesting because she ends up kind of rejecting her faith. She has the little stones in her cheeks that she gets yes. removed, which are very ceremonial. Yes. And, yeah. And so it made me think, like, well, why didn't. <laughs> Why couldn't yes. executed guy yeah. take this route um, <laughs> instead of the, you know. Yeah. He's, maybe his ghost is lingering around like, I could have done that? Well, I could have done that? <laughs> so that's a little weird that she ended up, you know, she got away, basically. Yeah, really. It just seemed like it was a pretty yeah, much Yeah, it's not know, like you know, we had the scene where uh, she's about to leave the planet and there the cops or the, the church police running to catch her. Yes. <laughs> right, right. Stop that ship. Blast them. 
So that is her kind of her origin story. Um, interesting that she was a member of the church at one point and then has forsaken it um, because they made her do terrible things, I guess, you know? Yes. When she arrives at the ship and she starts finding out what's happened in the 34 plus years since she's been in stasis, which yes. we, we conjectured was going to happen and, and did. Sure. Um, yes. One of the things she finds out is that Harry Selden's body was jettisoned out into space in a coffin of his own making, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> I'm sure that'll never come up again. <laughs> no, no, it has no not. significance. <laughs> no, Barry, no, 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 no. <laughs> One of the things she does there is uh, she finds out about what happened, right? Hey, what? Oh, they made it to Terminus. Great. Um, you know what happened with Rach, and she finds out that Rach was executed. And this is a moment that I found. Uh, I just I, I couldn't go there with the way that the the script had her basically go like. Oh, I find out that Rach is executed. Show me Rach's execution. <laughs> you're like, what? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> really? Like, this is your your true love. And you're like, please let me see his violent death. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm watching it now. Like, what? I don't know. I, like, I, I need to see I him never... one more time. One more <laughs> right. time. <laughs> now, for the show purposes, they thought, oh, this is, you know. Rightly, I guess, that it's dramatic. It's the guy, yeah, his, his yeah. final dying declaration, and he's he obviously thinks, she's going to be watching this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'll watch my execution. But, you know, <laughs> so she didn't know what the plan was. So maybe she was like, wait, is there another special... Uh, you know, coffin that Rage has that they put him <laughs> right. into. That's right. <laughs> the special Rage cosh, uh, coffin that makes him a clone. And, yeah. Um, so a it's just, dead body. <laughs> it's just something I would never contemplate doing. I know a loved one, uh, whether that's a, 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 a spouse or a parent or a kid, you would be like, I'd love to watch their execution. No, no. Now, she does immediately go to commit suicide, so I guess it rightfully breaks her psyche. Yes, um, but yeah, see, she, she, like, she might have been trying to prepare herself, you know, like like okay, right. you know, in order to really kill myself, like, what what can I do to make me really want to kill myself? Wait, a little push over the cliff, the push <laughs> right. over the the suicide yeah. cliff. Yeah. <laughs> um, it actually yeah. kind of remind me of a documentary. Uh, Werner Herzog did a documentary called Grizzly Man. I don't know if you ever saw that. Um, no. It's basically about this guy, Timothy Treadwell. And he spent many years living with and filming grizzly bears until a grizzly bear mauled him to death. Okay. It's <laughs> like, okay. They could kind of see that coming. Anyway. Was that, was that uh, his intention? <laughs> no. It's like, I don't no. know how much film I'm going to need. Before. Right. <laughs> but he was there a long time. To you know, to his credit, it was like 15 years where he'd keep going back each season and hanging out literally within touching distance of grizzly bears. So he, very tragically, horribly, was, was mauled to death by a grizzly bear. Mm -hmm. And his he, family wanted to watch it? His camera was on, lens cap was on, but he got the audio. Oh. So there was the audio of him being, being killed. Uh, so can, uh, we, his, can we do this take again? <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Um, so uh, uh, the the former girlfriend had the tape. Ah. She had never listened to it. Oh. And so Werner Herzog got permission to listen to it. And what he does is he puts it on on his headphones. Mm -hmm. so, and then he does it. It's not you don't hear the audio on the on the documentary. Okay. All you do is you you see him listening to it. Ah. And so he listens to it, and then you know, stops the thing and he's like, and he tells this woman, he's like, look, never listen to this. And mm. in fact, you should destroy this tape because until you do, it's going to be this white elephant in the room that is always going to be there. Like, Oh God, this, I don't know, some kind of token of this guy's terrible demise. So anyway, I don't know what ended up happening with that, but she ne yeah. apparently never listened to it. And so I it's a understand. good thing you're saying that David Goyer wasn't making that movie. Because he would have been like, what? you got to listen to this. <laughs> you got to check this out. So anyway, just a, like a, a real life version of, hey, mm. a loved one of mine died horribly. I, yes. don't, I don't want to hear that or see it. Uh, but in this case, she's like, show it. I kind of thought she was a little too frantic as well, even after mm. the immediate threat was 
diminished. Like, she's on a ship. The ship isn't trying to kill her actively. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. She, uh, you know, I guess I'm, I've never been in a position where I'm, you know, I watch my loved one stab my mentor to death and then put me in a pod and then I wake up on a spaceship by myself. But it I felt was like she you- was... I was telling you earlier that I was uh, rewatching The Martian recently, and that did a good job of balancing uh, the immediacy of my life's in danger with uh, I'm all alone with no physical presence that is, you know, no, like, you know, no animal or man or anything that can that endanger me. It's like he, the accident happens and he needs to act fast to live, but once he's inside, it's like, now what? You know, right. there are right. a number of scenes where he's like, I'm going to die. And that sucks. But he's it's going to be a while. But it's so, going to be a while. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, you get a nice little bit where before, before he decides, uh, no, I'm going to live. I'm going to work to live, you know. And, yeah, that that struck the right balance, I feel. And this, yeah, you're. I think you're, you're like, why are you rushing? You're, you're not. Yeah. In, it's, it's not like the thing's going to say. I mean, it's not arguing you with the fact that it's like oh since you're not you know race you're i'll just turn rage. everything off right. no <laughs> it's not saying exactly that. life support i'm not needed yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean she's probably it seems like she has access to food for instance so she's not yeah, yeah, yeah. starving or anything and yeah. she doesn't you know, doesn't seem to be a, a problem so right. um, it's interesting that um i feel like uh it's asimov who came out with the rules for uh, robots, right? The uh, yep, yep. So yeah, I don't feel like they've talked that much here. But here's another instance where you know the uh, it didn't want to kill her, so it didn't do anything like that. It wasn't a danger to her. This AI right. or whatever. Right, right. It didn't. It's not malevolent. Right. It's just like no. I'm sorry, you don't have access to that. Sorry. Um, and so she has to like work her way time. around the access. She has to figure out what do, what do I have access to, yes. and how can I use that to my advantage? And so she problem solves basically where she's going, which is Helicon, yes. uh, uh, Selden's home world. She's using brains over brawn to that's right. problem solve. And so that's kind of where we end off with that. The ship slowed down because it's it's getting close to Helicon, I guess. I don't know okay. how close that means, but it right. still seems it's pretty far in the distance. Um, but uh, she does. She gets this, you know, image of Harry, of Harry Seldon on the floor of the ship, and I'm thinking it has to do with the little earpiece that we saw uh, Rach take away from him after he killed him. Either there was video, or that's like his. As you mentioned, it might be an AI. I don't know. I don't know what that is, but I think I think it has something to do with they were capturing something of Harry Seldon with that little earpiece. It could be that he wakes up and he's like. You know, ah, I'm Harry Seldon's AI. Hi, Rach. And they're like, wait, what? Oh, God, no, that's horribly wrong. <laughs> we also see this that, you know, obviously it was intended to be Rach. So we get the idea that the equation, again, it has this, it can predict macro, but on the micro level, it didn't predict Gale's intrusion. And so she yeah. has now yeah. kind of tilted this equation so, you know, in, in measurable ways. Yeah, I mean, one thing I was thinking about is the fact that um, the ship was, you know, it, it knows about race and it's, it's, you know, and it also has uh, <coughs> the um, uh, hologram of uh, Harry. Uh, you know, I th we were saying that it seems like it's part of Harry's plan. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess the original plan was that race would escape and leave her behind. Um, right, right. That or to didn't like, program it to like, well, I can program it once I'm inside with with uh, her, you know, to, I mean, but you know, why you wouldn't, why you would like, okay, I'll kill her and then run to get her, uh, you know, he no, would you go wouldn't. with her. So yeah. You it, would, it, and there was only, it seemed like one so pod. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't part of the plan. He was going to escape, I assume, which, you know. And uh, the reason he threw that the That served in, him right. Yes, because he needed it in order to get she into needed, the thing. Right, to activate. So the knife was part of the open unlocking it's, mechanism. Yeah. Dramatically, uh, so, I'm not sure why that needed to be. You know, it's not like she, she was like, you know, I'm not sure why it needed to be a knife that did it. Right, right, right. It's like you could make two tools. You know, you know, the knife will be for the killing, and then the door opener for the opening of the door. Hey, why don't you take no, this no. key? 
<laughs> you don't need it. That's a part of maybe it's a part of Harry's plan is like an economy of things like, you know, no one's going to suspect this to be a key. So I guess, right, she was going to be left there and I, I probably not, she would not have taken the blame. There'd probably be, she'd probably have a reasonable alibi, blah, 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 that it wouldn't be like, you killed, uh, well, like it is now, where they're like, you killed him. Yeah, interesting to know what the actual plan, how she fit into the actual plan. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. in theory, you would want someone like her who understood who could understand the math to still go along with them and, and make decisions. So, right. I just, I was speculating that maybe they didn't want somebody that knew, knows the math so that they would kind of have to just work, you know, without knowing. Right. Without, but, it, you know, but then you, then your plan sage. would be to take her with you, you know, and right. not to deprive them of Absolutely her. Absolutely right. That so, doesn't seem to, that doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's that storyline. Back on Terminus, we've got the Anacreon invaders uh, successfully take down the barrier protecting the town uh, through like a whole series of subterfuges that it results in the uh, the leader with her eye, a little mechanical eye, and then it creates a like an EMP burst and takes down the fence. So that was her plan all along. Was like I need to have them interrogate yeah, me in yeah, the tower. Yeah, which. Also, I was kind of like, why do they have to interrogate her in the tower? But I, anyway, that was that was the thing. The the enact the uh, transport well, folks show and up and the like take her to the tower. That, you know, so much of it um, is uh, predicated on making her. I mean, she has she's the outsider. I mean, Salvor. Salvor is the outsider, and so they don't trust her. And so whenever she comes up with advice, they're always like, what? You're not even part I of the know. plan. That is so, the moral of this story. The moral of yeah. this episode is stop ignoring <laughs> Salver Hart. <laughs> She's yeah. like the Cassandra of Terminus. Like everything she says, you're like, that's not going to happen. Oh, it happened. Yeah. You're like, oh, bless. <laughs> Man, I know she. She's right every time, and they're like, "No, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Wrong. no, you're no, wrong, no, clearly wrong." <laughs> clearly you know, wrong. and like one of the things I've heard uh, the writers talk about is the fact that you know it was kept from everyone that she can go up into that thing. Uh, oh, okay. And so, so you know, they don't want to be treated that. differently, but she'd be treated better, maybe. You know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> maybe right. I am part of the plan because I can go over here and you guys can't. So you do maybe get the you can treat me kids, with some respect. <laughs> you get the feeling that the kids in the very beginning of like episode one, they kind of seem to know that she can get at least closer than mm. most. Oh, right. Yeah, one of them's like, no, I can't do it. Like, oh, you can't, yeah. huh? And they take down the, the barrier. Yes. And then when the Trantor ship drops out of orbit, yeah. uh, they've got their big cannon and they yeah, yeah. they blow up this Trantor ship. Yeah. Um, which at first, it seemed like that was maybe their purpose was to draw Trantor into a fight. But it right. seems more when, when we have this little meeting of the minds between Salvor and the leader of the Anacreans, she says, oh, no, no, no. Uh, we just won revenge on Terminus because we blame Harry Seldon and his predictions for why Trantor decided to massacre us. And so we wanted to take revenge out on Selden's foundation. Uh, sure. That's kind of what I got out of it. Um, seemed like a long way around to get there, but they got there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, now, interestingly, too, I did see the um, showrunner talk about how they wanted this to be actually a bigger event. Right. Um, but because of the pandemic and stuff, they had to limit the number of people that could right. be attacking right. and all that right. kind of stuff. So it yeah, became a smaller scale thing. Yeah, but apparently they were used digital doubles and stuff like that, though. So you know, it, and it, it seemed it good. seemed like they had enough. They had enough yeah, yeah, to yeah, like yeah. look dangerous against a bunch of villagers. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. like, yeah. it's tough to know how anybody survives. I mean, it's just guys just yeah, yeah. shoot, 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 shoot. So obviously Salvor is going to survive, but uh, we'll, maybe she runs to the vault and like hangs out there. Um, I think the vault is going to provide some, you know, something with the vaults going to happen probably sure. in the next episode or so. Um, yeah, so anyway, a lot of people in Terminus are going to die. Um, and we've got Gale heading off to Helicon where she expects that when she's when she gets there, she's going to be taken into custody, I guess, you know. 
um, she has this narration where she talks about how she had these nightmares about black holes because right. they have these event horizons that you can't escape from. And so that's kind of her destiny right now, right? She can't seem to escape yes. Yes. this destiny that she's been put on. Um, and she can't even, yeah, tell the ship to turn around. This no, she's like, she oh, can't. great, okay. God, just, yeah. just, my air I come. So that's where we are. I'm hoping yes. we get back to Trantor next week. <laughs> um, I do, I just, you know, I, I more like, clone follies, <laughs> right? More clone follies, more Klingons. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, anyway, interesting to see where this is going. This is halfway through now. I think it's a 10 episode season one. Nothing and right. um, so we'll be back talking about episode six um, and perhaps we will chat about Dune. I think Dune is dropping this weekend mm, so maybe we I could uh, right. talk about uh, you know Frank Herbert's classic re-envisioned for the big screen. So yeah, um, th- you know yeah. hmm, I guess I got enough time to maybe make myself watch and I think I would have to the original movie. Oh, the uh, the David Lynch. Yes, David. I Lynch saw that in the movie theater. And I remember yeah, just me thinking, too. how long is this? Movie? <laughs> 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 like, is there like a is there like an intermission? Does it come with an intermission on this thing? Um, that was a long movie. Um, yeah. I enjoyed many parts of it, but hey, that movie is a mess. Oh, okay. It is a mess of a movie. Um, but well, so hopefully, this will not be as messy. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Anyway, um, we'll be back talking about all kinds of fun sci fi things. And uh, thanks as always, Paul. Appreciate sure. it, good sir. You're welcome. Um, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye.